This is Comet Picks by the Glick. And I'm your host, Jason Glick. Ah, how you doing, Jason Glick? I'm doing fine, John. Yourself? Not too bad. What do you have for us this time, sir? Okay, we're going to the uh, well, like inexhaustible well of um, Shonen Jump um, titles because I mean, like, it's built, Shonen Jump is built builds itself as the most popular manga in the world, popular comics in the world, and God knows that they aren't kidding about that because like aside from like the like um, multi-million um, sellers they've produced over the years, ranging from the likes likes uh, Fist of the North Star all the way to Drag Dragon Ball, Rurouni Kenshin, and the current juggernaut. Um, that is that is one one piece. Like they they've made their name on selling um, like lots of like lots of um, really popular series, mainly to boys, but also to lots lots of um, girls who appreciate this stuff as well. Now, Shonen Jump has always had a um, fairly um, definitive, fairly established style that can basically be boiled down to I'm going to be the best at at X. Like say, like say. Um, like say Dragon, Dragon Ball and you know Goku's quest to be the be the best at everything, um, Luffy's quest in One Piece to find the find the pirate treasure. It's like and think seeing things like, and things like that. And a Bakuman series I want to talk about now is no exception. It's basically um, I'm going to be the best. It's basically about being the best manga um, cre- creator out there, but not just any manga because this is a series that's remarkably meta for like for Shonen Jump because it's all about Two creators who want to um, work at Shonen Jump and create the best, best, most popular ma- manga out there. It's, on one end, this can be seen as, um, like, say, like, 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 like the concept disappearing, concept that disappears up its own ass remarkably quick. But that that doesn't quite happen here because it, because it, because um, even for all the fact that it's for all that it's married to the, like, the, the, like the Shonen Jump style, it manages to tell it to do like a lot of things. It's um, focus on um, on wits, intelligence, and luck um, separates it from a lot of the battle manga that the uh, that that um, that dominates the series. Now, a bit about the a bit about the creators. It's it's um, unique in the sense that it's actually that there's a division of labor between the writing and the art. Story is by um, Tsugumi Oba. Art is by Takeshi Obata. That those names sound familiar. This is the same um, writing and art duo who brought you Death Note. Now, I don't think I've, I may have mentioned Death Note a couple times here in the past, but let me just say that my opinion is not any different from the many like the common common um, opinion common take on this series. That is that while the first half of the series were the um, battle of wits between um, Light Yagami and um, it's again the, and his um, and his um, creepy goth detect, um, nemesis um, L, it's like that's that part that stuff's actually that's just actually pretty good. And it's a really Good battle of wits. It has some nice, nice clever twists over its um, six and a half volume run. Problem is that after that, once it gets past the ha- just past the halfway mark, like I said, vol- after, like halfway through volumes, like on volume seven, it's like the series basically um, does something that at first seemed like a brilliant um, self destruction of its premise. To um, but in, in actuality and in retrospect, it was actually just a series jumping the shark because Light was replaced with two, um, like younger, um, like um, two of his younger proteges. No, no, L was replaced with two of his younger proteges, and he was, and they are just more ciphers, mere ciphers for um, for the for Oba to um, like play this um, battle, play this battle of wits. Mind you, um, Light, the battle of wits between Light and L was kind of like. like just felt like a really um, like the author just like doing like shipping out like a group group of puzzle boxes for his characters to to um, like figure the way out of. But this one, but they, but um, Light and L um, both had like like real character and real personality to them, and that that made it forgivable forgivable to a certain extent. Um, the two new characters, um, Near and Mellow, um, do not, and they were just they just felt more like transparent. Um, just like plot devices given get given human form also and also the volume ends with also the volume the series climax is basically the iocane powder duel from the princess bride played completely straight just terrible and ultimately left ultimately inflicted the worst sin that i think about like any work of fiction can can leave can leave a reader with that is um leaving leaving the reader to think that they could have written a better like a better ending which I do, and if you ever if you ever curious about what I think how Death Note should have ended, 
feel free to ask me sometime if you ever catch me in person. Anyway, Bakuman um, is – first of all, it's 20 volumes. It's eight volumes longer than Death Note, and it is – and it is at least, at the very least, twice as good. This is pro- even though it's even though it's like it's it's twenty volumes. I honestly think they could have gone on for much longer, um, considering the um, considering the uh, wealth wealth of story and characters they had they had to work with. I mean, by the end by the end of the series, I mean that, there was one there was at least one particular plot thread that I that I was hoping to see brought back again. But um, and but it's not it's not perfect though. I will say that um, it. That um, like shonen manga seems to have like a, a real weakness for um, creating like believable or convincing love stories, and um, Bakuman is no exception. Granted, like whenever I think of Bakuman, Bakuman's love story, I keep going back to um, the terrible, terrible, um, predictable um, relationship that um, that was that was the heart that was part of the heart of um, Cross Game, and um, Bakuman isn't as terrible because it doesn't um, adhere strictly to convention. But it does something different, and it just winds up being more dumb rather than just like utterly outright terrible. But I'm getting ahead of myself, like because like, Bakuman, like I said, it's all about um, creating the best manga um, for Shonen Jump, and its and its main characters are um, Murataka Mashiro, a young, and he we're introduced to him at the in his um, final year of middle school as I'm um, just like a like a shiftless layabout who's good at drawing, and he's got eyes for like the prettiest girl in the Prettiest girl in school, Miho Azuki, and he's and like he doodles in his book. He's got some. You can see he's got some talent, but he's just you know content to just you know gr- cruise through life, just just um, fulfilling basic like basic requirements of everyone of whatever's asked of him, and that's it. Until one day when he forgets his just his his art book and um, runs back to school to get it, finds out that um the uh, the, the smartest kid in school, Akito Takagi, has um has com- has um found it himself. And um he, and and Akito is so impressed by his work here. His he offers he he offers a challenge to Morataka and says, "Hey, I want you to team up, team up with me and make the best manga, best manga ever." Um, at first, um, Morataka is just saying, "Yeah, you're absolutely nuts. And there's no way I'm doing this." But um, Akito is persistent, and um he and he eventually um like um calls Morataka out to um Miho's um house because like, he wants because he wants like because um. Because he wants to try and like declare their dream in front of the girl right there, and before before Murataka can run away, she comes out and um they and he says like and um Akito tells him yeah we're gonna do like we're gonna make, make the best we're gonna create manga it's like I'm gonna do the do the writing and Murataka says yeah I'm gonna do the art and she's thrilled by it and this gives um, Murataka the courage to say yeah and once. Once we're, our work is animated, you'll, it's like, will you marry me once we once you do the voice of the of our of our heroine? And much to his surprise, she says yes. So that puts them on the path to, cre- to creating manga, and and twenty volumes of of hard of hard work, more hard work, and more hard work above that, along with a bunch bunch luck luck perseverance. It's like and. And crazy, craziness in general, because now considering that um, this is this series is about a um, writer artist duo, I'm willing to bet that there's a lot of that um, Oba put a lot of like what they had encountered over the course of the series, over in their own pursuit as well, in their own pursuit of making manga, manga as well. It's like there's certain there's one story about how like uh, how an editor um, like um, shredded shredded a writer's um, writer storyboard in the sense that. Uh, right in front of him, saying like, like, hey, hey you know, I could, th- thinking that, hey, you could have done better. And God knows the writer takes this, takes this to heart, and just like what, comes up with something better because he's so, because he wants to improve, um, prove his editor wrong. It's not, like, you know, little little anecdotes like that make you wonder. It's like, you know, how much of this stuff he actually they actually put in there. But, but Bakuman, um, like on one hand, like it does embrace the a uh, lot of like I'm um, Shonen Jump, like I'm um, Shonen Jump stere- stereotypes in the sense that you've got. Like I said, you got these characters going like I'm um, trying to create out to create the best manga ever. You've got um you've got your target um they're like I'm um, Eiji Nizuma like the um like a manga wonder kind who um it's like who's uh, who who basically um achieves um success like um right from the beginning because he's got a natural talent for this stuff and he's and he's um driven by a desire to um like to create um more than any 
It's like more than anything else. But you've also got a bunch of odd, oddball and eccentric um, creators, like guys like um, Shinta Fukuda, who is the um, who's all raging id. It's like and um, the most expo- outspoken person in the group, um, Ko Aoki, who is was the first major female first major female creator they they created. She's she's far more reserved, and um, believe and doesn't go in for a lot of like the standard shown it. Like I'm showing in tropes that um, that a lot of people um, develop in, dwell in. There's Aiko Wase, um, um, Akito's uh, main like uh, main rival in the um, like from uh, from high school who who wants to be, who um, she she likes him but she wants to be recognized recognized by him by beating him at his own game. And um, and um, guys like and also like um, Kazuya Hiramaru, who who is um, one hand he's got a natural talent for making manga, but he also does he's a former salary man who who um who quit his job and started, started making making manga and hit and landed big with a hit series called Otter Number Eleven, but he is lazy and irresponsible and he's like the kind of guy that you know hey I'm like how how many more um, pages do I have to draw before I can retire. It's like his like his work ethic is is a little shameful, but also something that that um, I can I can truly appreciate and and um, empathize with this as well. Now, now this, like, the, now um, like, given this isn't this isn't really a battle series, so you can't really like have like a lot of like the, there's no real visceral thrill from just like um, having the uh, characters you know like fight fight it out in order to determine who's who's the best. It's all it's all about just um like the rankings rankings from Shonen Jump, and also how many and how many graphic novels they sell as well. And to his credit, um Oba actually does a good job of having this standard, um, uh, of making this standard work over the course course of the series. Because for a lot of the because for a lot of the um for, for a lot of the first half of the series, it's the um the main conflict is this he lies in Moritaka and Akito just basically um like accruing enough experience in order to um create create their masterpiece. Like they get some early early success with their first series, The Money is the World's All About Money and Intelligence. And um they even land like a like a minor like a like a minor success with um Detective Trap, like a series about a detective con man who um exposes evildoers. But um but their plan but their success success of that series is derailed by an by an illness on one of the creators, creators' parts, and then they try. They also try to do a gag, it's like a goofy gag series after that, and that doesn't quite quite work for them. And it's it's all about just you know them trying to, you know, just like just like get get um like get over the like try to get like this great work that we all know is coming out of their out of their heads. And um like I said, to to Oba's credit, he does a good job. He does a convincing job of um, showing us that these these creators like uh, um, I think working it's like working together and working through these is- these issues and eventually just like you know like stumbling upon like the right like the right idea for a hit series um, in what they in um in what's called um perfect crime party about a bunch of um high school high schoolers who do who play who play elaborate pranks on. It's like it's like on certain certain people at, at school. It's like it, it's a clever it's a clever bit. And like one of the if I have if there's one weakness in this if there, the the series has several weaknesses. But one of the things is is that you know like we see like Oba has lots of ideas for series like in this like in in Bakuman. And you kind of wonder like you know hey you know like if you're thinking of all these series all these ideas for series you know why haven't you um tried any of these yourselves? Because like I don't know it's like I. I think Perfect Crime Party um, sounds sounds like a clever clever idea, and um, their later series on um, Reversi, well, you know, it's you know, it's meant to be their masterwork, but clever, but the series um always like um treads the, the fine trying to find danger of like showing just enough of of their work to make you think, okay, you know, I can believe that this would be this would be good, but also not enough to like allow you to actually have a like a, a focused opinion about it, because like, that's the worst thing you can do when you're talking about creators, talking about doing a series about um, you know, people who create great literary works or any kind of any kind of creative work. But by showing by showing what what the actual work they're creating, it's like that's like that can always blow up in your face because you look at this because you show enough and you think, you know, this is actually kind of terrible. I can't believe that this this would actually be popular, but. They, but um, Oba manages to tread the fine line of showing you just enough of of the works in question to actually, to actually make you think that you know this, like this could actually be a these could actually be credible successes. 
like in in this world. Yeah, but Bakuman also also succeeds in create in um in delineating itself from the re, from the issues with um like taking place in Shonen Jump because yeah, I mean the other issue by actually explicitly setting this in Jump is that you know wait well what about the other titles that are out there what about One Piece what about Naruto what about Bleach you know like how how are these titles steering now that's now the cool thing about now the clever thing about this is like um establishing a a, a um, group of manga artists who um come to, to who um who basically make their debuts out all. Uh, all, at around the same time, is that he's actually got his this um, this group that he can that um, that can compete against each other, and so like you're more involved in the um, battle. Like, you're you're more involved. Your this is drawn between the in the battle between these it's like these creators as opposed to you know what's actually going on in Jump itself. It's like I mean even when like they announce the rankings of like, who's popular this week, um, you can always just. You're left to imagine um, who's like who, which, which title is in the place are are in the placements that they're not mentioning. So, so there's that that right there as well. Now, I will now, but now the characters themselves are all are actually are generally are generally pretty compelling. Or even though I do think that um, Moritaka and Akito do have kind of they have a certain blandness to them in the sense that you know there's just meant to be like a certain amount of like reader. Like reader on my identification between them in the sense that you know they you can imagine your, yourself in these it's like in these guys um, play, places as well but there's not really a whole but but even though like they've they've got their basic personalities established there's not really a whole lot to um like to them to their personalities beyond just you know hard hardworking clever and resourceful but um thankfully the rest of the cast there is is there to pick up the, the slack? There's um, there's Kaya Takagi who becomes or Kaya who becomes um, Akito's wife, one of the um, rare um, example like um, convention defying um, aspects of this manga in the sense that I don't I've, I've never I think I've actually seen like a manga in recent memory that actually has this characters like um, getting married and like eventually going into um, showing their domestic bliss as the series go on, goes on. Um, there's Eiji Nizuma who is my, probably my favorite um, character in the series. Because even though he's a, he's initially you think that he's going to be the, uh, the the character who's going to be like the main villain of the title because when you first mention him he's kind of like this weird quirky guy like given, prone to shutting out sh- sound effects as he as he works and um, when he agrees to work with Jump um, he says okay but if I become the most popular artist um, in there I want you to give me the right to end one end one title that I de- that that I design that that I decide. But um, as things go on, you find out that he's um, re- actually a really big fan of Akito and Mor- Moritaka, or Muto Ashirogi, as their as their pseudonym goes, and he views them as the, as their as his chief rival. And he's also um, more than willing to um, play the villain in order to it's like in order to spur spur them on to greater heights to catch up with him. He's a great character, and I can It's like and I it's like I really enjoyed seeing him and the way that he um divide he like. Like he turned out, like like he um he defied expectations from the very beginning, and I like, like I said, I like like Hiramato and his work, his crazy work ethic. Um, Fukuda is like all id. Um, Iwase or um, or Aiko, it's like she's um she's established. Uh, you know, she you can see, even though she's also meant to be somewhat of an antagonist to like to Ak- to Akito, like she you can also like they do a good job of like showing her how she's like this kind of this this one. Like this um, would be romantic interest who really wants to wants like him, him to be hers more more than anything else, but she just can't. But but it's just it's just not meant to be. And a lot of this, a lot of her um, actions are driven more by that feeling rather than um, any any sense of out, outright villainy, which I liked. As far as outright villain goes, that goes to um, like I'm Toru Nanamine, Nanamine, who it's like who is a who was inspired by their by um. I, by um, Mutashirogi's first work, the world's all about money and, tel- and intelligence, but he learned all the wrong reasons from that series, and um, rather than just and as opposed to everyone else in the series who gets who gets to their position through through hard hard work and perseverance, he tries to game the system by um, by crowdsourcing his ideas at first, and then doing a far more like. Um, like um, elaborate microcosms attack tactic in the uh, like as a series as like um, later in the vault in the series. I and I can't, now I honestly expected him to come back for a third round to uh, 
because you know like all these like these kinds of things end with like you know like the heroes turn, turning the villain around in order to be their friend but it was but it was not to be so so I, so I, on one hand like I said there, that's one of the like plot threads I kind of wish had been picked up like as a, as the series went on still but um but also another thing about, key thing about the series is this relationship between its its editors and how and I'm showing you how the um how Shonen Jump editorial um reacts to all the to all, to their to their creators and it's I have to admit that it's probably a very rose colored um like um view on this in the sense that, he, that even though like the, the the creators and the editors may clash it's like it's like everyone's like it like the editors are the relationship between the editors and the creators is all editors will always like do the ultimately do the right thing or in order to um help it's like in order to help their help their, their charges and in the end when one when when a creator like um like rejects that relationship it's like it's ultimately to their detriment more than more than anything else it's like so it's like it's so i mean it's, like it's i wouldn't say you want to go into this into the series expecting a realistic portrayal of like of um jump like of of jump creators and its and editorial standards but at the same time it's like it's it does it does work for a certain, in a certain sense, just like pulling back the curtain just a little bit to see, just to see see the inner workings of the series. And a lot of the editors are it's like are pretty fun. Well, I like um um like um Yujiro, the uh, like um, Utashi Rogi's editor. He it's like he's he's all he he clearly has his head on straight. Um, a lot of the other um um ed- editors like say uh, like um Yama, uh, let's see what is this guy. Oh, um, like Yoshida, who uh, edits Hiramoto, has to pull out every single dirty trick in the book in order to make get his creator to actually create. Um, that's see, that's that's sort of like that's a large source of of amusement as well. But but overall, it's like me, like I really really enjoy the series, also because it keeps keeps bringing something new to like to this to each volume. It's not just rehashing um, like fights. Or conflicts. It's always like some sort, some new, new issue brought from volume to volume, and um, that's all. But even then, like this whole specter of Morataka and um, Miho's um, relationship always um, shows up every once in a while to just remind you of how dumb it is, and um, and like distract detract you from the, uh, from the from the story at large. Now, that I will. S- People with, um, with long memories should remember that the last time I talked about this series, my review of Volume 19, um, we've got um, it. I, uh, I said that it actually ma- I managed to uh, make their relationship. Uh, they actually managed to um, get the creators actually managed to get some traction out of their relationship by pitting it against um, something that I absolutely hate, which is Jap- which is um, Japanese fan entitlement in the sense that you know, like fanboys will um, freak out if their favorite voice actress. Um, has a girlfriend, and they're like, "Oh no, now she's never gonna di- now she's never gonna want to be with me at all." It's like you're betraying your fans and all. It's like, and, oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, um, the uh, anyway, anyway, it's like so. Um, Miho had uh, ended the vol- volume nineteen with um her declaration that yes, she was she was secretly dating Moritaka, even though they've only met like twice or you know, three or four times throughout the series, and that their love was so their love is so pure and that we're meant to respect and be amazed by it. Like that, the only thing we're going to go to preserve that purity. I don't think it's stupid, but when you're pinging against like, like um, the deluded um, dreams of fanboys, I'll take that against that against um, that any, any day of the week. Anyway, final volume starts out really stupid. Then um, gets, then gets better. Then moves back around to stupidity again, mainly because um. Like I said, the um, it, it hinges on the uh, it's like on the competition for Miho to um be the uh, the voice the voice in um more to, in um, Muto Ashirogi's um, masterpiece um, Reversi, and um it's it's like and it and the whole competition plays out just about as about as you'd expect. It's like it's full of false tension since you know she's gonna get the get the job, but if they still got the screeners are still have to sell the uh, the competition anyway. But then we um. Then we also hit upon something that's all that's also about the heart of also comes in the series as well. Because as, as um they've as um, we're talking about have created have worked on Reversi, they feel it's the best thing they've ever done. But at the same time, this is not a series that is meant to go on for, for like forever, like say One Piece is. Like this is a ser- 
this is a series that they that's going to be last for about a year in Shonen Jump, and um, but at the same time, like that's going to create problems because you know, hey, if it's not going at the on at the time the anime premieres, you know, how are they going to be able to promote promote things as well? It's going to be um, it's going to be a I got double it. It's going to like um, hamper the promotion of the anime as well. And uh, but at the same time, it shows the creators sticking to their guns and determining like, yo, hey, we ultimately have to do what is best for our series and end it on our own terms. And that's a ser- that's a sentiment that I can clearly get behind. That's it's the kind of thing that I wish that all creators would take take to heart. And um, it's like and 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 it's like and do and realize as well. I mean. God knows there are some titles out there like Oh My Goddess that um, have gone on like far, far beyond their expiration date, and um, are likely not going to end until um, their their creator um, finally um, like finally passes away. But um, but the but and that's like I said that's how it seems for like a lot of like a lot of manga series. But but I, I res- but I can certainly respect um. Like um, Oba and Obata's um, dedication to like, ending the series on their own terms, and more importantly, like ending the series when, like, when you still want more, as opposed to like I'm drawing, like I'm drawing it out until, until like uh, it hits a bum, it hits a bum story arc, and then they decide to start wrapping things up, like Gantz. Anyway, then um, well the um seri- well, well, well the series also then goes on to focus on on the success of Reversi and Miho's. Um, role like um like role like um performance of the uh, main hero heroine. The final volume then then sets sets out their their um fine like um like their first real real date and it's well you know I I bought into this series because of the their because of um, Mortaka and Akito's um desire to create real like um the best manga ever. I didn't buy into it because of because of like that that because of that um, goddamn stupid romance between um, Pete and Moritaka and 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 Amiha. Um, so so the final so on one hand, at least this series um, ends better than Cross Game did in the sense that it actually gives you like the main culmination of the romance between the two characters. At the same time, that romance was just dumb. So so at the same time, it's more of a booby prize than anything else. But still, I enjoy it. It's like I enjoyed reading this series, starting from from beginning to end o- overall, and even like and also even um, as I was rereading it over the past two weeks, and on how it was and how it's like how I'm um, rereading all these volumes, I'm um, like created even more of a backlog than usual because like in addition to all the stuff I've got from Comic Con, I've still got more stuff coming in, and I just couldn't I just couldn't read all this new stuff because I was rereading Bakuman, but it was still but it was still great. And I'm saying I'm glad I bought, and I'm glad I'm glad I bought, bought bought all 20 volumes of this series. Unlike Death Note, this isn't this isn't something that I'm placing in my two cell pile. I want to keep keep this around forever. And if you are interested in buying it, like I said, it's all the series is available right now, all 20 volumes. And Viz will be releasing a nice 20 volume um, box set um, late, later this year. So if you're interested in seeing the, uh, it's like the, the let's see, it's two like um, two creators take on. So you take on the mysteries of um, making Shonen Jump manga. I highly, I highly recommend it. Can't imagine like any other Shonen Jump series that um, that really ends that ends in a way that lead, that um, doesn't leave you want um, wanting more in the way that the way that this one does right here. So John, it's like I really was rambling on there for a while. It's like any thoughts on this? No, it just sounds like a fun series. I think I might have mentioned that before. For them to to put together, I guess you know, yes, well, it might show some of the rosy side, but um, you know, there's probably plenty of opportunities to lampshade themselves and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of a thing. Okay. All right. Well, it's like that's yeah, that's about it for now. Though, let's see. Next week, oh, I'm still trying to um, decide whether or not it's going to be a. Uh, a solo um ec- like um thoughts on um Rick Remender's X Force, um Uncanny X Force, or um or just thoughts on some of the other Marvel series that have wrapped up in this time. You'll you'll know the answer if you see me um if I talk about um the last volumes of um Brew Baker's Captain America or um Kieran Gillen's um Journey into Mystery. Um before before then, 
then you know that's you'll know what I'll be talking about next in two weeks' time. All right, and with that, uh, we thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, later. All right, bye.